How much longer? Very soon now. Why do we watch? Patience, Mr. Lemoyne. We must give the good doctor the benefit of every doubt. And you must admit that we have done that up to now. Yes, Mr. Rocker. I must admit that. Let me see now. This is nine times a half a billion dollars, and, and this will make ten. It's still in its orbit, Mr. Arcot. For the moment. Miss Carrington, what is your opinion? I correlate observed data, Mr. Arcot. I make no predictions. Well, I make a prediction. All those men in that satellite will die, as have all the others. And when they do, your project comes to an end, Doctor. The satellite is approaching the critical area. There it is, the barrier. It's forming again. Get through with it. Get through it. Truly sorry, Dr. Van Ponder. What is it that destroys every manned satellite we launch? I don't know. I just don't know. And yet you propose to follow this tenth failure with another attempt, using more of your volunteers? No matter how many times we fail, Mr. Arkaden, We'll continue until we succeed. Human beings are not guinea pigs. I warn you, Doctor. I shall fight you on the floor of the Council all the way. We've seen enough. Still cold, baby. Yeah, but I'm getting warmer every second. Hey, listen, doll. They're playing our song. Yeah, I don't dig the arrangement. Yeah, I see what you mean. Too many violins. Change the station. Maybe we can get somebody else's disc. All right. Don't move. I'll be right back. A shooting star? Oh, darling, you're so romantic. Make a wish. Oh, that's no shooting star. Can't be Spotnik. It's not listed in the TV guide. Oh, wow. Something is flipping around here. Yes, and it's my job. <laughs> oh, Jay, I, I really am scared. Did, did you hear something? Yeah. My elastic just snapped. No, besides that idiot. Go see what it is. Well, uh, go ahead. Well, you're not scared, are you? I do now? I don't know, but make it snappy. We're double parked. Well, don't just stand there. Who's the three-letter man around here?
as Nasianum Unitum Planetae. <laughs> To the United Nations of the third planet of minor luminary Sol, called by the inhabitants thereof the Earth. Attention! We, the masters of the spiral nebula Ghana, have been observing your actions. Understand, Earthlings, that we look with disfavor upon your persistent efforts to depart from your own planet and infest other areas of the universe. We have therefore set up quarantine measures to ensure that this contamination shall not be allowed to spread. We shall frustrate your every attempt in the future as we have those in the past. Knowing that Earthlings are equipped with rudimentary reflex-type intelligence, we are taking this means of conveying our command that all such efforts to expand and depart from the infected planet Earth shall from this moment be stopped. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. The chair recognizes the honorable member from the United States. Mr. President, honorable delegates to the General Assembly, I speak for all men everywhere when I say that this alien intelligence is wrong. That man cannot be dismissed as a disease or as a growth that infects our planet. Our hopes, our aspirations lead us to the stars. And no other race has the right to judge us or to deny us that journey. What do you make of the space message, Dr. Von Ponder? Well, you think it's a hoax? Gentlemen, 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 ladies, please. Now, I'd be a little less than frank with you if I didn't admit that whatever I might say is only an opinion. Well, Doctor, why was this message in Latin? Does it mean an end to Project Sigma? The fact that the message was in Latin causes me to believe it's a hoax. There are those who would like to see our rocket program abandoned. However, as for Project Sigma, it most assuredly will proceed. Then you'll ask for new volunteers. You think you'll get a crew? Well, there's an old saying. If you just want something, send someone for it. But if you really want it, go yourself. Then you go up yourself? Lockhart calls it a suicide mission. I won't ask anyone to take a risk I wouldn't take myself. I mean to captain my own ship. Captain your own ship? Well, isn't this very dangerous, sir? And now, gentlemen and ladies, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with some components. I'm going with him. Well, I guess that makes me a volunteer also. You really started something this time, Doctor. I think you're right. Well, thank you. But I'm not at all certain I am right. But if this thing is a hoax and you can prove it, I didn't say I could prove it, Dave. I said there was evidence. Unfortunately, there's just as much evidence the other way. Like what? Well, ever since the capsule landed, we've been working on it. The metal container itself defies analysis. It's harder than anything we've yet been able to devise. And it has a fantastic thermal resistance. Hmm. Well, I didn't know that. I haven't seen all the reports yet. Oh, yes. And consider the method of communication. Now, this is something. Telepathically geared to the human mind. One merely thinks the word message, and it appears. Stop thinking, and it goes blank again. Curious about the Latin. Well, why not Latin? Once it was understood throughout the civilized world. Perhaps they think it still is. Well, the whole thing is still a little hard to swallow. Well, Dave, not so many years back, space travel itself was a little hard to swallow.
I've calculated the figures for the Doppler effect at the speeds we'll be traveling. I want the figures all the way up to the speed of light. We can't put the solar reactors through a full test here on Earth. But if they reach optimum efficiency in space, we'll be the first to achieve photon propulsion. But, Van, that would mean... Dr. Van Ponder's office. Mr. Hotchkiss. He sounds worried. Yes, Hodge. It's Arkad and his crowd, Van. They're reviving the whole suicide issue in the council. They're beginning to play it pretty rough. You better get down here in a hurry. I'll get there as fast as I can. I have to be at the United Nations. Uh, extend this series and I'll check it tomorrow. So, Mr. President, even at this late hour, and after millions have been poured down the drain of this insane project, it is not too late to reconsider. Something greater than money is at stake. The lives of the fine young people who have been deceived into believing they would travel into outer space. Mr. President, I apologize to the honorable delegate for interrupting, but his speech is no longer necessary. Dr. Van Ponder, without whom Project Sigma cannot proceed, Dr. Van Ponder was killed in an automobile accident while on his way to this forum. Mr. President, I extend my condolences to the delegate from the United States. But now there can be no further reason to delay passage of my motion to suspend payment of funds to Project Sigma immediately. I never lived through another moment like that again, Van. Getting that message, the shock of seeing you in the doorway. Risen from the dead like that, it's... Uh, it's almost a miracle. As I explained, the officer was mistaken. Well, miracle or no miracle, it certainly worked like a charm. It pulled the slats right out from under old Ockham. If I didn't know you better, I'd say you planned it yourself. But if you'll excuse me, Hutch, I have some charts to prepare. I do hope you don't mind my using your office. Not at all, not at all. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Spending ...would be a very serious matter at home and abroad. There was consternation in the United Nations Assembly when Dr. Van Ponder appeared dramatically after his death had been announced to the Assembly. Upon his appearance, the delegates cheered Dr. Van Ponder to the rafters, then proceeded to vote unlimited funds for Project Sigma.
They proceed with their plans. Our warning did not deter them. I propose a stronger warning. Come in. Excuse me, Van. I... Oh, I thought I heard you talking to somebody. No, Dad. Quite a lot. I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Personal. Certainly. Sit down. Thank you. What's on your mind? It's about Sybil. Miss Carrington? She volunteered for this job, Van, because she has great admiration for you. And the faith that you'll probably succeed where the others have failed. But you and I know what our chances of returning are. Do you agree with Arkad? That it's a suicide mission? I didn't say that. If I did, I wouldn't be here. But I know the danger's involved, and I think you should order Sybil to stay behind. Miss Carrington is a very intelligent young woman. Quite capable of reaching her own decisions. Doctor, turn on the radio quickly. Fires, floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions in unheard of numbers bursting out all over the world. Foreign Minister Slurdoff first accused the United States of triggering the fires that broke out in his country by nuclear means. Until convinced that similar holocausts were occurring without visible cause through this and other nations as well. There have been suggestions that these disasters are a follow-up of the warning purporting to come from outer space. From hostile beings on a distant nebula who demanded that humans desist from attempts at space travel. The strange message was dismissed as a hoax by the United Nations Security Council at the time, but many responsible persons believe that it should have been taken seriously. But just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. A bulletin has been handed me. And reports are coming in thick and fast of wheat and cornfields destroyed, ships sunk, all occurring at the same instant. This is a bulletin. There can be no question of coincidence here. These terrible events are purposeful and directed. Yeah, no? Yes, Hodge. Yes, we've been listening. Well, what can we do? We've got to quit. I know it's disappointing. How do you think I feel? Yes, I know. But we can't fight this. Yes. Dave Boyer is here with me now. I'll send him over with a statement you can read on the floor. not giving up. We're up against a race of beings whose intelligence is as ours to ants and bacteria. We have the choice of continuing to exist under whatever conditions they may name, or of being exterminated. It's that simple. Sybil, I want you to type this up immediately. Intolerable. Well, I guess that puts the wraps on Sigma. And to think that Van should have to plunge the knife. Now let Stevens give the report. I haven't got the heart for it. I'm sick. The honorable delegates will recall how my colleagues and I warned of the dire consequences if we ignored this ultimatum. We are obviously in the grip of a force stronger than we can oppose. I notice that the delegate from the United States has chosen not to be present. Well, Mr. United States delegate, don't you agree that we must immediately give up this insane project as a matter of pure naked survival? The delegate from the United States sends us apologies for his unfortunate absence from this important meeting. But he sent me here with a message that expresses not only his views, but the views of Dr. Van Ponda, head of Project Sigma. The delegate has spoken of naked survival. Gentlemen, you do not survive by abject surrender. Nations and worlds must fight for survival. If we give in now, let down our defenses, give this alien planet full control over our actions and our lives for mere survival, won't they decide to take even that away from us? Now, the gentlemen here ask themselves why these aliens are so concerned that we do not penetrate the Sigma barrier. Isn't it peculiar that this action alone excites them to retaliation? They consider us a danger to them if we break out of quarantine, as they so tactfully put it. They haven't even bothered to find out whether our motives are peaceful or not. They don't know that we would collaborate and share knowledge, 
Greet them as equal partners in the universe. But we can't show them this by surrendering. No, it is precisely because they do not wish us to travel the skies that we must do so. Gentlemen, we must proceed with Project Sigma at all costs. certain defeat for Project Sigma was turned into a brilliant vindication by the impassioned address of an emissary representing both Delegate Hotchkiss and Dr. Van Ponder. Radiation density at 1,500 miles, 10 to the minus 27. 2,000 miles, 10 to the minus 30. 2,500 miles. Doctor. How did you get here? Well, we've been sweating it out here for the past three hours. Well, that's funny, because I, I could have sworn I just saw you over the proving ground. I guess the pace is getting too much for you, Johnny. The eyes go first. Van Harrell will probably be next. He's been working like twins. Triplets is more like it. Oh, I just came to tell Dave that the new solenoids have arrived. We're testing them out. Okay, Johnny, I'll check them later. You know, Van, I would have sworn you'd take my head off of that stunt I pulled at the Security Council. On the contrary, Dave. I should thank you. I don't know what got into me to give way as I did. I mean, your debt for saving Project Sigma. Do you still have that growth on your arm? You know, you ought to take care of that van. Those things can be dangerous. Dr. Van Ponder, you are wanted in reactor construction area. Urgent. I'd better get over there. Dave, I'd like you to... What's the matter? Nothing, Van. Well, you can handle the rest of these reports, can't you? Sure. See you later. All right. See me, John? Yes, Doctor. It's these new solenoids. They're not testing up the capacity resistance. Oh? How do they test? Oh, 68 ohms maximum. Should be at least 75. See, I thought if I added this extra I coil... I don't think it matters very much. Every element of the reactor is geared to a 6 to 1 safety factor. <laughs> Look out! Good Lord, I'll get a doctor. No! John! Look at that hand, Van. What kind of a joke is this? Huh? Would you mind explaining what this is all about? Oh, sure. John came rushing in, said you'd burned your hand. Burned it off, he said. With the torch, I saw it. Quite obviously, he's mistaken. Yes, I should think he is. 
We were examining these solenoids. Suddenly he screamed and ran from the room. I see. Well, he's been under a lot of pressure. I'm surprised there hasn't been more of this sort of thing as we approach blast off. What are you talking about? Buck fever, my boy. I'm afraid you're grounded. But you can't negate what Come I saw. Come on it. now, I'm sure Dr. Van Ponder... But I worked. saw it with my own eyes in the flame of that torch. And he didn't even feel it. John! There's something about you. You're not human. John, stop it! All right, I'll go. But I know what I saw. Perhaps you see too much, John. Come on, John. Hello, Sybil. This is Dave. Look, I know it's a little late, but this is kind of important. Dave, where have you been? They've been trying to locate you everywhere. We blast off at 2330. 2330? Van, advance the time. You've just got 45 minutes. You better step on it. Look, Sybil, meet me at the launching site. I've got to speak to you. Dave, stop wasting time. Hurry! It's important. Rocket one, minus six minutes. You've been much time, Dave. I've got plenty of time. They're just calling for rocket one. I'm going on rocket one. You were scheduled for rocket two with me. Well, Van made the switch. Van made the switch? Mm -hmm. Sybil, you can't go with him. He must have had a reason. Rocket one, minus five minutes. Directions on the calculation. Okay. Checking in, sir. All right, Bennett. Ready, Van? I thought you grounded him. Oh, no, he's perfectly okay. I checked him out thoroughly. Even gave up your hallucination, didn't you, John? Yes, sir. I'm sorry I caused trouble, sir. You see, just as good as new. And astronautical engineers don't grow on trees, do they? No. No, they don't. But I'll see you on board. Yes, sir. See you, ma'am. Rocket one, minus four minutes. Dr. Van Ponder wanted in general control. Dr. Van Ponder, you're wanted on board Rocket One immediately.
minus two minutes. All unauthorized personnel clear launching area. We're about to blast off. I didn't get a round trip ticket. One second stage. Fire. Rocket two, second stage. Fire. Rocket three, second stage. Fire. Rocket one, third stage. Fire. Rocket one approaching rendezvous point. Rocket two converging. Rocket three converging. Fire. Contact completed, ship in orbit. 
Ground control handing over. Good luck. Thank you. Satellite control taking over. Up antenna. Antenna up. Activate gravity control. Gravity control on. Feedback interlock on automatic. Feedback interlock on automatic. Orient solar aspect cells. Solar aspect cells on. Automate robot control. Robot control on. Sybil, check the computer panel. I was right. How about your surviving the blast off? What are you, Doctor? I can't, can't move. I've partially inactivated your muscular system. What? There's no time to be more explicit. I have no desire to harm you. Our necessity governs action. The warning from outer space was valid. It came from a superior intelligence. An intelligence able to transform energy into matter and back again. You once told me I was not human. You were correct. I am above the human. A transformation which can be yours. This satellite will never return to Earth. Its disintegration upon contact with the energy barrier will end Project Sigma and all similar projects to come. The creatures of your planet are not yet ready for space. Who are you to decide? We have only your best interests at heart. In this realm of outer space, you are mere children. And it is disastrous for children to enter areas where they have so little understanding. John, I can offer you the opportunity of joining us. You can go to hell! I was born a human and I'll die one before I'll join a race that kills innocent people for abstract ideas. Abstract idea. Very well. You've made your decision. One I'm certain you'll deeply regret. For only death remains. Stan, I thought I heard... the acceleration. I knew he should have stayed behind. Schedule, sir. Fine. This is the captain speaking. We have successfully completed the first phase of our mission. And I wish to congratulate all members of the crew. I can now reveal to you the plan by which we hope to overcome the cosmic accumulations which have destroyed all of our previous manned satellites. The plan consists of two steps. Step one has already been accomplished. This called for a blast velocity of over 1,000 times that of our previous satellites. A force which has carried us into an orbit far beyond the moon. At our present velocity, this cosmic mass, if encountered, will act as a solid impenetrable wall. However, at the first indication of this mass, or sigma barrier as we call it, we will put into operation the second step of our plan, which varies according to necessity. 
If at this time we have accumulated enough solar energy for 750 miles per second, we shall be able to blast through the barrier and in so doing destroy it. Should the barrier appear before we have reached the requisite velocity, we shall take immediate action to avoid it. Dave, what are you doing here? You should be in operations. I regret to inform you there has been one casualty. Astronautical engineer John Campo was found dead. Apparently the result of blast-off acceleration. All hands not on duty will attend a space funeral at 1,400 hours. Sybil, I've got to talk to you. It's about Van. He's not human. <sighs> Dave, don't be ridiculous. I saw him. He's split in two. He's been seen in two places at the same time. Why aren't you at your post? What happened to Johnny? Did you kill him? We're now in outer space with one man dead. And I can't afford to lose another by confining you to quarters. So I'm giving you another chance. We'll say no more about your accusation. But I warn you. Get out of line just once more, and I shall take the necessary measures. I remind you that I am the captain of this ship, and that astroplanetary law gives me supreme and unquestioned command. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Van, please forgive him. We've all been under a great strain. There is no room for personal feelings on this mission. For his sake, he'd better straighten himself out. This is a sad duty we must perform to say goodbye to a brave and beloved fellow crewman. We must think of him as one who gave his life in a noble endeavor, the salvation of the human race. Well, I feel it's all my fault. I should never have checked the kid out. He said there was nothing physically wrong with him. Well, that's the curious thing. I was extra cautious. I double-checked every test. There's just no reason why he should have died from the same acceleration we all took. His training record was better than most. He was murdered. Murdered? Look, Johnny knew something dangerous, something he shouldn't have known, and he was killed for it. And so we commend his body to the depths of space. face there's something different about it I can show you what I mean well that means nothing Dave everybody's face is slightly asymmetrical yes but not Vans I've been watching it here's something else you got a magnifying glass yes Sybil I'm glad you're here I'd like you to see this too Dave you're disobeying orders orders from Van don't you realize he's trying to destroy us all these are Van's prints. They're identical. Mirror images. What does that mean? What I've been trying to tell you. This is not Van. Dave! It's true. I saw Van's car. It was burnt to a crisp. Over the license plates. I checked those out. Van died in that car. This man's a substitute. A copy of the real Van. You don't expect me to believe that fantastic nonsense. Is it fantastic that there's an intelligent race out there that stops at nothing to keep us quarantined on our own planet? Is the Sigma barrier fantastic? They've destroyed every ship we sent up, and now through him they mean to destroy this one. Could those prints lie? You know, ever since his accident, Van has always found some excuse to keep me from giving him a routine checkup. I haven't even checked his heart. It's quite possible he doesn't have one. But I'll find out, and we'll know for sure. Oh, hello, Howard. Hi, Van. 
What can I do for you? Well, it's time for a checkup. I have to check your heart. It has to go on the report. I'm in perfect health and you know it. Yes, but I'm not so sure the board will take my word for it. You fellows read the instruments. It's up to me to read the human being. Captain, Captain, one in control room. Urgent. I guess we'll have to put it off, hmm? No, no. I'll wait. All right, Howard. I'll be back as soon as I can. Head skipper, the dial's are acting up. But it's still pretty faint. Could be cosmic dust. Keep your eye on it. If it continues to build, call me. Yes, sir. Well, what do you make of that? Cosmic dust. so formal. I I'm sorry. Well, I'm a little hurt. I thought we knew each other better. Better than that, anyway. I've been wanting to talk to you about us. Of course, Captain. Van. Van. I'm in the middle of a computation. Half an hour, then. believe you thought I didn't have a heart. Everybody has a heart. 
Dave Boyer put you up to this, I suppose. Put me up to what? Quite typical of the childish mind. I'm sorry, Howard, but I have no more time to waste. What do you mean? You're a man of science. What would you do if a guinea pig got out of control and threatened to ruin one of your experiments? I don't understand. John didn't understand either. What is this? I'm issuing an order for the arrest of one of the crew. Sir? I've discovered that John Campo did not die of natural causes. He was murdered. I want Staff Engineer Dave Boyer brought to my quarters immediately. You may use force if necessary. Yes, sir. Sybil? Dave, I just saw Van. He seems so strange. I don't know what to think anymore. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. I've got to stop him somehow. Dave, please. Look, I'm going after Van. You go to Dr. Lazar and stay with him. I don't want you here alone. You're under arrest by order of the captain. What for? No questions. Let's go. Get to Dr. Lazar. Tell him what happened. Check the business screen. You better call Van Ponder. What for? He already told you it was cosmic dust. Sure, cosmic dust. I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. of the ship. Please listen to me. Yes? I'm human now, Sybil. I need you. Captain, the prisoner has escaped. Don't you see, I... Alert all hands. The satellite is in sector H9, and in sector H12 is the barrier. They're heading for it. And let us say, rather, the barrier is forming where the satellite is bound to travel. Well, Van knows what he's doing. He'll avoid it. Well, let us hope so. At least this time, let's hope so. Seize the prisoner at all costs. I'm sorry. But there's no alternative. Astrogator to captain. Astrogator to captain. Why do you... 
Captain speaking. Magneto Nebula's cloud mass forming dead ahead. Alpha concentration is building to critical points. Suspect Sigma barrier. Yes. Sigma light. Captain Sigma barrier dead ahead. We're bearing down rapidly. Awaiting orders. Repeat. Awaiting orders. I... Remain on course. Remain on course? What's the matter with old iron pants? I don't know, but if you don't get on the ball, this $3 billion balloon's gonna go bust. Not only that, we're in it. Request further orders. Remain on course. You're not human. Who are you? What are you? What am I? Why, I'm human. Because of you, I'm human. to astrogate him. Give readings on approaching mass. It's about time. Alpha, 102. Beta, 147. Gamma, 208. Thermo, 477. Radiation, 862. Mass in quadrant 3, sector 9. Estimate collision course. Collision time estimate, 5 minutes. Activate plan B. Plan B? Reverse that order. You'll destroy the ship. Don't be a fool. You can't hurt me with that. For the love of Pete, you're running us right into that thing. You got a better idea? You can be stopped. Radiation up. Alpha, beta, and gamma going up. Sky speed. We're decelerating. Just following orders. Ours is but to do and die. Die? You've said it. Crash emergency. Get ahead. First previous order. Ditch plan B. Activate plan A. Activating plan A. Secure all hands and prepare to blast. Oh, that's more like it. Hang on, boy. We ain't out of the woods yet. sunlight.
hands secure for blast. All hands secure blast in 120 seconds. Why don't they blast? Ninety seconds. Satellite control, do you read me? Do you read me? You and Essie calling Sigma. We read you, Sigma. We read you. We are passing through Andromeda at the speed of light. We've made it. The whole universe is our new frontier. Mm -hmm. 